Hello, everybody, and a welcome to HCAM Sports Talk Live. I am your host, Tom Nappy. And joining me today, we have Bob Hamilton and Mike Tarosian. Guys, how are you? Great. Excellent. Well, today we are going to recap the incredible 2019-2020 Hopkinton Hillers boys basketball playoff run. And there was just so many great things that happened that season. And of course, we'll have our week 17 picks and we'll reveal the winner from last week's picks. It was very close, very close, but we'll see who won in the second half of the show after uh, we do the recap. But first, a couple of things to let everybody know. The Hopkinton Little League registration is open. So if uh, you have a young one that would like to play some baseball or softball in the Hopkinton Little League, registration is open now. Deadline is January 31st. Head over to HopkintonLittleLeague.org and click register now. And also, we got some live sports coming up as the winter season will get started next week on HCAM Ed, as well as our YouTube page. We have a full slate of games for you next week. It all starts on Wednesday, January 6th with girls hockey at 5.40 p.m. against Westwood. Then on Thursday, January 7th at 6.15, we'll have Alpine skiing. Friday, January 8th, we'll have a double dose of girls basketball. We'll have JV at Norwood at 5, Varsity at Nor uh, versus Norwood at 6.30 p.m. And uh, we are also working on trying to get those freshman games on the air too, so we'll keep you updated on that as well. But uh, it's a very good possibility that we'll have the freshman game airing as well at 3.30 and then on Saturday, January 9th, we have Varsity Boys Hockey, 3.40 p.m. versus Norwood. And then on Sunday, January 10th, another dose of boys basketball. The JV game is at 12.30 and the Varsity game at 2 p.m. So a full slate of sports to open up the winter season. It should be a pretty busy week for us, Mike. I tell you, I'm looking forward to it. I just can't wait to get back out there. Of course, it's uh, terrible that we can't go out there with our full crew as, as we used to, as we love our volunteers, you know, we'll be lucky. We, we get to see Bob uh, every day, but we uh, will get to see uh, Bob at some of the basketball games. You know, we, we miss our uh, John and Mary's and, and everybody else that uh, uh, contributes uh, Tom and Samantha, all the regulars. Uh, and of course our announcers, Steve Spector and, and you, everybody, it's going to be, it's going to be different, but you know, we're going to be out there. We're going to be covering it. Um, also, I just got an email from Rich Cormier. He may be moving some games out of the middle school gym because there's no fans allowed at all because uh, of the gym side. So they, they may be moving some of those to the athletic center. So we may have some more uh, games to broadcast as well. Excellent. And um, if I had a guess, I mean, it'll certainly probably be limited fan wise, but it, they're going to try to let as many people in as they possibly can. Obviously, with the uh, whole pandemic situation, you can't really have a packed house, which is unfortunate. So perhaps it'll be something like the fall where each player gets a couple of lanyards they can give out. But in any case, we'll have all the games we can for you live so you can watch them from the comfort of your own home. And, and no pep band this year. The best yes, <laughs> that, that, that will be missed. I yeah. love the pep band. Gets me uh, amped up yeah, for top. Miller's yeah. basketball. And Coach Keen likes it as well, as we heard uh, last hey, week he, here on this show. He started it. He brought it back to uh, to Hopkins, you know, moved him, uh, which is great because it's a volunteer uh, thing for the kids. And the kids, you know, they, they run it themselves. It's not run by the teachers. The pep band is run by the students. And it's nice that uh, they were able to uh, fill Tom Keen's request. Uh, what was that, about five years ago? I think he started that. I think so. Yeah, I think it was about five years ago, which is awesome. And speaking of Coach Keen, he had uh, quite a journey last season. Uh, he was diagnosed with cancer, and he was out for part of the season. The uh, assistant coaches did a good job at stepping in while he was out. And fortunately, he was able to beat cancer, which is great, and get back out there and have an incredible playoff run. So without further ado, let's get in to recapping this incredible 2019-2020 Hopkinton Hillers boys basketball playoff run. We're going to start off the recap with senior night festivities. 
last home game of the regular season. They took on Medfield. Coach Keen was back in action, and they also uh, did a great job that game raising money to fight cancer. Um, and there was a uh, great shout out to uh, Coach Keen for what he went through uh, that season. But it was an incredible night during senior night of the 2019-2020 season as the Hillers took on Medfield. So without further ado, here's a look. Thank you all for coming out tonight for our game with Medfield. Um, before we start with the senior night festivities, we'd like to first very quickly uh, recognize our former boys basketball coach, Coach Bliss, just retired after 40 years coaching the golf team, was just named National Golf Coach of the Year as well too. So we wanna give a big hand for Coach Bliss. And again, thank you all for coming out tonight uh, for our Coaches vs. Cancer game. Um, thank you as well to Medfield for, for being a part of, of tonight's festivities as well. We wish you guys the best of luck with the rest of the season. Um, instead of uh, charging money for admission tonight, um, any, any money that is given at the front table is going to go directly towards American Cancer Society. Um, cancer is unfortunately something that's affected all of us uh, in many ways, but one of the great things is that it also brings hope in that everyone can come together in a night like this and a community can come together and, and try to beat it. Because in order, in order to stand up to something like cancer, it takes heart and strength, courage, it takes determination, it takes resiliency. And there's nobody in this gym that has more of that than Coach Keen. We love you, Coach Keen. Thank you. All right. First things first, Herb, come on out for real quick. I don't have anything for you, but I want you to come out here. Come on. Come on. I don't know if the, uh, all the Hoptown people know, but Herb got his 400th win on Monday night, which is unbelievable. 400 wins for Herb Grace. Congratulations. Thanks, I, feel, I feel so honored. <laughs> Not 600 losses. I feel so honored to, to, to be able to coach against Herb for the last 20 years. And I know Medfield is so lucky to have the best coach in the Tri-Valley League. So... And I'd like to uh, thank her very much and, and again, thank the, the Big Blue. Uh, tonight is Coaches versus Cancer and also very importantly, it's a night to recognize the seniors. Every night, um, every year on this night, you know, I thank the student body for coming to the games and I thank the uh, community members for coming to the game and, and the pep band. Um, but I'd be remiss if I didn't take this time since I have the mic to thank everybody in the community of Hopkinton for the support and outpouring of well wishes and prayers and good thoughts for my family. It's, it's really reaffirmed and confirmed what I've always thought about the town of Hopkinton. So I want to thank everybody in the community. I had uh, so many people uh, reaching out to me and many of them sharing personal stories about um, their battles with cancer. So I want to thank everybody, and I'd like to thank everybody who came out tonight. Thank you so much. And now, as I said, tonight is definitely a night to recognize the seniors and all that they've done over their four years. So we're going to introduce the seniors and call out their parents, and they're going to take a quick picture. First up, Captain Stephen Maffiori with his parents, Keith and Mary and Grandma Peg. Next up, Captain Tommy Ambrosoni with his parents, Mark and Maria and brother Michael. Next up, Captain Drew Rancatori with his father, David, and his uncle, Steve. Drew's mom, Maureen, wanted to be here, but she was under the weather tonight, so 
We'll send good thoughts to uh, Maureen and Grandma Ruth. Next up, Jacob Cohen with his mother, Lori, and sister, Allison. Ned Dean with his parents, Tim and Allison Dean. Travis Finfrock with his parents, Jeff and Lisa Finfrock. Alan Rosen with his parents, Bruce and Linda Rosen and brother Joel. Ellis Spar with his parents, Jerry and Elizabeth Spar, sister Olivia and brother Kyler. And I'd like to recognize our senior manager and scorekeeper, Jason Hicks. Here's Tony with the steal, Finfrock. And nice put back. After the senior night festivities, the Hillers game versus Medfield got underway. 12 different players got into the scorebooks for the Hillers. The Hillers led after the first quarter, 18 to six. Hopkinton added a whole lot more scoring in the second quarter. And Rossoni. Outside. Cooper knocks down the three. The Hillers closed out the second half on a 21 to nothing run and went into the halftime locker room up 44 to 13. Back outside to Ambersoni, he'll reset. 13 on the shot clock. Nice pick from Rosen. Back out to Mafiori. And Steve picks up right where he left off. The Hillers continued to dominate in the second half. The third quarter ended with the score 58 to 26 Hillers. Hopkinton ended up taking the game 80 to 51. With the win, the Hillers improved to 10 and 7 on the season and officially clinched a playoff spot. The Hillers boys basketball team with quite the exciting senior night and a tremendous win over a good Medfield team. Uh, always great beating Medfield, an incredible senior night for the Hillers last year. And uh, now we're going to get into the postseason run. The Hillers went into the uh, sectionals as the eighth seed, which is the last seed in their bracket, uh, Central Division Two. <laughs> uh, so they went in as the eighth seed. So their first game was against first seeded Grafton, and Grafton was undefeated heading into this game. And I think uh, a lot of people knew this Hillers team was good, but they figured this grafted team's a powerhouse, but could the Hillers take care of business? Let's find out. This past Monday, the 11th seeded 10 and 10 Hopkinton Hillers girls took on six seeded Wayland in the girls central division two sectionals. The Hillers led 16 to 10 after the first quarter of action. Lauren Cho dropped nine points in the first frame but the Wayland offense came alive in the second quarter and early foul trouble led to nine points off of free throws for the Warriors. Wayland outscored Hopkinton in the second, 26 to six and led at the half, 36 to 22. The third quarter was more back and forth, but Wayland kept pace with Hopkinton and outscored the Hillers 13 to 12 it was a 49 to 34 Wayland lead heading into the fourth. 
despite a couple of Kiki Fossbender field goals, Wayland was able to maintain and took the game 57 to 45. In the game, Kiki Fossbender put up 15 points, while Lauren Cho had a team high 18 points. It was a great effort by the Hillers, but they will end their season with a record of 10 wins and 11 losses. Wayland advanced to the quarterfinals and fell to Medfield in a close one, 56 to 51 on Thursday night. Congratulations to head coach Mike Greco and the girls on a tremendous season. The Hopkinton boys entered the Central Division II bracket as the eighth seed with a 10 and 10 record. In the first round, they went to Grafton High School and took on the first seeded 18 and two Grafton Indians. And the game was a back and forth battle the whole way. Here's a look. Lambert Sony launches a three, no good, just wide. Put back and a great feed over to Rose and up and in. He goes for the first points of the game. Here comes Utara. Utara working down the lane, feeds it out. Now back to the corner to Palmer. He'll drive along the baseline, up and in. Ooh, that was too easy for Palmer. He saw the lane on the baseline. He cut up with the left hand and in. Takes it down the lane, spins around the defender, up and good. What, what a sweet move. Oh, a skillful move, Tom. That was pretty. Down the lane, and he's blocked. And it is collected by Rosen, and he puts it in. Feeds it over. Here comes Palmer, taking it to the rack, up and in he goes. Gotcha. Rosen up and the foul. Rosen turns around up and in. Looking like Kevin McHale on that one. Great stride, pivot up and off the glass. Maybe we'll get a new nickname out of you. Utara for three. Got it. <laughs> Woo! Mara Utara right at the buzzer. After one quarter of play, it's Hopkinton 13, Grafton 11. Down the lane, Ooh. off the window and in. Count it. Here comes Utara trying to respond. And he lost it. Yep. Hiller's basketball. Clyde's with Ambersoni, and Ambersoni shook it up. Fires it to the corner, up for a three. McInerney got it. It was only a matter of time before McInerney hit one of those shots. Well, speeds it out to Boder. Now Utara driving in, up, and he oh. slams it down. Oh, boy. And that brings the crowd to their feet. Wow. Powerful slam by Utara. Rosen. Driving in, around the defender, up and in he goes. Good pivot move by Rosen. And Five seconds of counting left to go. Down the lane, up for the shot, got it! Oh, big bucket. And after one half a play, it's the Hopkinton Hillers leading the Grafton Indians 27 to 22. Back to Ambersoni. Feeds it in Finfrock, oh. Rosen finishes! Driving in, around the defender, up, count it. Mm. Bergenholz puts Grafton within three. Finfrock, Mafiori, tips it over to Ambersoni. And it's stripped away. Here comes Palmer. Palmer, coast to coast, to the rack, up and in, plus the foul. Yeah. Rankatori back to Rosen. Rosen surrounded by defenders, kicks it out to Mafiori, up for three. Got it! Oh. What a quarter of play that was. We are knotted up at 37 apiece, heading to the final eight minutes. Stay tuned, folks. You are not going to want to miss the conclusion of this game. Cooper for three. Count it! Ooh. Matt Cooper knocks it down! The junior comes through big, and the Hillers are up by eight. In front. Down the lane, trying to get it out to Rosen. Regathers off the fingertips Ooh. in! Left hand finger roll. Beautiful shot by Finfrock. Sony driving in up, and good! Using his body. Official, I think, just missed the collision. Mafiori is down in some pain. Ambersoni over to Cooper. Back to Ambersoni now. Looking for where to go with it. Going to fire to Finfrock. Tip to Rosen, and Rosen finishes. What a beauty of a tip by Finfrock. Best pass of the night, Finfrock, giving his team the lead. Up for I three. Oh. Got it. What a response by McInerney. That clock run down. Shot clock at 15 seconds. Matt Fiore calling it out. Hillers need to get a shot off soon. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Amber Sony driving in around the defender. Oh, off the window wow. and in. Matt Fiore has been tough as nails today and a big shot. Second of two. Got it. Huge free throws. Hillers up by six. Over to Utara. 
Utara going to likely take a three. No, he'll take it to the rack. Off the window and in. You needed a three there if you're drafted. That's going to do it. The Hopkinton Hillers are going to take down the first seeded Grafton Indians and advance on to the semifinals. A 59 to 55 win over Grafton. Unbelievable. Tom Nappy alongside head coach of the Hopkinton Hillers, Tom Keen. Coach, what a tremendous win against a very good Grafton team out there tonight. Yeah, it was a, a great win against uh, a team that's the number one seed and 18 and two. And They've had a phenomenal year, so it was really a testament to how hard our kids played tonight that we were able to beat such a good team. And Elon Rosen had a tremendous night putting up 25 points. Can you talk about his performance? Yeah, he's been playing great the last few games, and he's really set the tone for us. I think he had something like 17 or something in the first half, and uh, he's so athletic. And when he's shooting the ball well, we are uh, a much better team. And a, a tremendous performance tonight all around in the low post. It seemed that the Hillers uh, dominated in the low post for the most part. Uh, to do that against a, a Grafton team like this, could you just talk about what it says about your roster this year? Yeah, you know, we didn't necessarily shoot the three as, as well as we usually shoot it. But the low post play, as you said, really carried the day for us. And I think that both teams were playing very hard defensively. And so there weren't a lot of easy baskets in that game at all and uh like you said the post low post was definitely where we had a little bit of an advantage tonight and how good does it feel as an eighth seed to come down and take down the first seed it feels fantastic you know i don't think i've ever had a team where with the lowest seed and we beat the top seed in the tournament and uh coach petratus is one of my best friends you know uh, we played together at Anna maria college so to be your best one of your best friends in the tournament makes it even sweeter <laughs> bragging rights for a while bragging right rights for a little bit <laughs> congratulations exactly. coach thank you so much tremendous win yeah, tom you. nappy here with elon rosen tremendous game out there how does it feel to take down first seeded grafton it feels really good uh we put a lot of work in it was a big upset and we're really proud of it and uh can you just talk about um your performance tonight you put up 25 points just had a tremendous night in the low post yeah uh, i don't know it I just started making a lot of shots. Uh, just, just a great performance, really. I don't know what to say about it. Uh, I just like to shout out uh, Sean Ellis for his amazing, uh, like multi-dimensional performance on the court and on the bench. It's amazing. And how was the atmosphere tonight? Uh, fantastic atmosphere. We got our fans right at our back, and uh, just a ton of energy. It felt like we was at home game. And how did it feel to take down a number one seed? Fantastic. All right. Best of luck in the next round. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Here with Stephen Maffiori. Stephen, a tremendous game by you guys out there. How does it feel to take down first seed graph? Uh, it feels awesome. You know, throughout the year, we, we started off real strong. And, you know, we had a, had a couple of bumps, obviously, you know, with Coach Gone and things like that. So to be able to come out here, and uh, get a win on the road, especially against a great team like Grafton, uh, we're really excited and we're happy we get, get to keep playing. And um, you played through some pain today, but it doesn't seem like you missed a beat. Can you talk about your performance? Uh, you know, it just, we all, I mean, we all contributed in a great way. You know, my, my job on the team is to try to make shots and you know, that's luckily that's my shots went in today, but you know, Elon, Tommy, Travis, you know, everyone who played today really stepped up and it's not a one man thing. It's really the whole team. And without the guys that went in and even the guys that didn't go and say, you know, uh, the guys that stay on the bench, they, they were up every whistle up every bass, you know, they, they, they gave us confidence. So it's real awesome. I mean, I'm happy I play well, but it's really, really a team win. And what's it like playing with this group? You guys seem to look like you have a good time out there. Oh, it's awesome. Uh, we've all been together since we started playing basketball. You know, there's eight, eight of us seniors, and then all the, we're all real close to the juniors too. So, so it's awesome to be able to play with those guys and you know, get a win with them. So we're tight. We love playing together, and we have fun. How's the leg feeling? It's been better, uh, not going to lie, but I'll be all good, and we're going to hopefully keep it rolling. All right, well, congratulations and best of luck in the next round. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot, man. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. The Hopkinton boys advance on to the semifinals round and will play the winner of Westboro and Milford at Clark University Tuesday, March 3rd at 7.45 p.m. Congratulations on a tremendous win to Coach Keen and the Hopkinton Hillers. An incredible win against Grafton. Going in as the eighth seed, taking down the number one seed. Uh, it doesn't get any better than that. Uh, what a win that was, Mike. I tell you, it, it was great. I mean, <laughs> I mean, a lot of action uh, throughout the whole game. You, you could not believe 
that Hopkins does not look like an eighth seed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was just, it was just incredible. And to, you, you, you see this a lot, especially in the high school and in college sports, how the lowest seed can take the, uh, the top seed. But to see it in the first round like that, eight and one, oh, that was beautiful. I don't think uh, in a lot of cases, uh, well, usually in hockey, it's seeding that doesn't matter. Right. Basketball, it matters a little more. Uh, but in that bracket, that very tough uh, Central Division Two bracket, anybody can take it. Yep. And it's uh, certainly been a mix of seeds taking the sectionals <laughs> in that bracket throughout uh, the last few years. Yes. And uh, speaking of a tough team in that very same bracket, the Hillers next would face Milford over in Worcester. And this uh, game was an absolutely incredible atmosphere. Uh, as one of my side gigs, I call a lot of Milford games. They get an incredible fan section as well. The Hillers, as we all know, they get an incredible fan section. And I think everybody in both towns might have been at this game. It was unbelievably packed. And it was just an amazing playoff atmosphere. It's like one of those atmospheres where the downtowns, so both towns were quiet and they had signs up in the stores were closed going to the game that's that's the kind of crowd you got here right absolutely and i believe it was clark university this game was at yep. uh so it's a little little tight in there a little uh <laughs> a little small but they fit everybody in obviously this, this year there'll be no playoffs unfortunately but uh hopefully uh next year we'll be back to normal and we'll certainly uh have some playoff atmospheres like this atmosphere was but uh, let's take a look at the highlights. Hillers taking on the Scarlet Hawks of Milford. And the second round of the sectionals, this was the semifinals round. And keep in mind, the Hillers, the eighth seed. Milford was the fourth seed in this game. So let's see uh, who came out on top. And we'll get you their starters as well in just a moment. Rosen with possession on the left wing, feeds it up to Amber Sony. Up for three, got it. The eighth-seeded Hopkinton Hillers took on fourth-seeded Milford in the Central Division II sectional semifinals. Side, now Maffiori on the corner. Maffiori back up to Ambersoni. Finfrock calling for a long left wing. Launches three, got it! The Hillers got off to a 14-0 run to start the first quarter and ended up outscoring Milford 23-10 in the frame. Feeds it over to Cooper, along the right wing, now into Rosen. Rosen trying to work the defender up and in. Another strong pivot move. Unstoppable. Kiss it off the glass for the two. Four different Hillers hit threes in the first. Along the top of the perimeter, feeds it in to the interior, and then it's passed over to Keith from Finfrock, and he knocks down a three. Unbelievable, 23-4 Hillers. Milford struck back in the second quarter and hit a few threes of their own, including a pair from Ralph Franklin Jr. Milford outscored the Hillers 21-14 in the second. To the corner, now over to Cooper along the way, around the perimeter they go, Matthew already thought about a three. Finfrock kicks it back out to Ambersoni, now Cooper coming in from the right side up to Ambersoni. Ambersoni over to the corner, net Dean for three, count it! Yeah, deep, pulling off the bench, giving his team some offense. Big shot. That's Hopkinton led at the halftime break, 37 to 31. Maffiori takes it up for the Hillers. Along the near side, coming down the lane. He'll take it back out to the right wing, up to Ambersoni. And now pass over to Finfrock. He'll watch the three from the left wing. No good. Tip by Cooper over to Rosen, and Rosen puts it up and in. Great tip by Cooper. He created that opportunity for Rosen to get the ball back. The third quarter was a back and forth battle. Early Milford foul trouble helped the Hillers net some points, but the Scarlet Hawks knocked down a few threes, outscoring Hopkinton 17 to 14, and it was a 51 to 48 Hillers lead heading into the fourth. And he'll pass over to Weatherby along the right corner, up top to Darling, drives up to the elbow, feeds Franklin Jr. up for the lane, and he's blocked by Finfrock. What a tremendous block underneath by Finfrock. Fury back to Finfrock. Finfrock feeds it in, pass it to Fetter over to Dean. Dean oh, is going to oh, take it up and in. Throughout the fourth quarter, it remained a close game 
but the early foul trouble for Milford came back to haunt them. Feeds it up top to Weatherby. Weatherby back to Darling on the left corner. Up for three. No. Off the back iron it goes. Tipped in the air. And it looked like it was simultaneous contact between Weatherby and Ambersoni. And the Hillers have it. Matt Fiore takes it up the far side. Along the short corner. Kicks it out to Ambersoni. Ambersoni for three. Got it. Oh, big three-pointer. Darling would have tied at the other end. Ambersoni gives them a six-point lead. With six minutes to go. Hopkinton missed several free throws, but ultimately netted 10 points from the line in the fourth. Despite a couple Milford turnovers, the Scarlet Hawks struggled from the field. Hopkinton outscored Milford in the fourth quarter, 15 to 11, and took the game 66 to 59. Rivals, they don't play each other much, but whenever they do, it certainly seems like they play each other every year. The intensity is just amazing at a Hopkinton Milford game. Darling takes it across midcourt, down the lane, up with the right hand, no good. And it's collected by Ned Dean, and that is going to do it. The Hopkinton Hillers are going to take down the Milford Scarlet Hawks by a final score of 66 to 59. The Hillers of Hopkinton are moving on to the sectional finals where they will battle Wayland at Worcester State University. That game will be Saturday night at 7 p.m. Hopkinton Wayland. What a game between these two teams. The Milford Scarlet Hawks end their season with a record of 14 and 8, while the 12 and 10 Hillers advance on to battle Wayland in the Central Division II sectional finals at 7 p.m. on Saturday, March 7th from Worcester State University. In point scoring for the Hillers, Stephen Mafiori had 16 points. Tommy Ambersoni knocked down 12. Elon Rosen was the team leader with 17. Ned Dean pitched in with 10 points of his own. A great team effort by the Hopkinton Hillers, and they are moving on to the sectional finals. Well, if there's one thing you could say about the TVL, those teams are certainly battle tested. And uh, especially in, when it comes to pretty much any sport, but especially in basketball, hockey, I mean, the Hillers, they went 10 and 10 that season. And then they go on to beat Grafton and Milford, who was really good uh, last season as well. Unbelievable. And uh, I think that shows you how tough the TVL is. They, they get a lot of competition uh, every year in the TVL between powerhouses like Medway, Ashland, Bellingham. And it doesn't matter if it's TVL large or small. Uh, the TVL is any of those teams are very good and can compete with just about anybody. Yeah, they do. And they, they show it. And, and, you know, just even making the playoff runs every year is, is uh, to you know, shows you what uh, how strong they are. But the, this TVL team, if, if you love hearing how, even though we don't make it all the way, how a TVL team wins a state championship, you know that that that's a that's a great thing, and you know, and everyone roots for that team when they're when they're in it, like you know, when uh, Ashland going to the Super Bowl, you know, we rooted for them the whole way, you know, because yeah, you didn't make it, but you know, support your league, and and uh, but this league is great. Uh, everyone talks about this league. Absolutely. Uh, any team out of the TVL, if they if they're in the postseason, count them in. They have a chance. Doesn't yeah. matter what seed they are, what their record is, they have a chance. Well, the next step for the Hillers was the sectional finals against Wayland. Would they be able to take down a very tough Wayland team? And Wayland, they're a team that the Hillers play every year. That's just uh, one of the teams that they throw on the schedule, and it's a great rivalry. Uh, between the Hillers and Wayland, and earlier you saw the girls' playoff game against Wayland, which unfortunately they lost. But uh, Hopkinton and Wayland, great uh, football rivalry and a great basketball rivalry, and the rivalry continued into the sectional finals at Worcester State University. Let's take a look at what happened. The eighth-seeded Hopkinton Hillers boys basketball team battled six-seeded Wayland in the boys' Central Division II sectional championship. It's off. Mafiori along the right way. Beats it across the keep on the corner for three. Got it! Brian Keith dropped five points on a pair of field goals in the first quarter to help the Hillers 
out to a 12 to 11 lead heading into the second. Fiore takes it up court, beats it over. Here goes Rosen, pass the defender up and in. During the second quarter, the Hillers had five different point contributors and outscored Wayland 16 to 13. Keith works it up the far side, pass to Cooper in the corner. He'll drive in up for the shot and he got it. Good response by the Hillers. Hopkinton led 28 to 24 over the Wayland Warriors heading into the second half. Over to the corner to Moser. Moser feeds it up to Moody. Moody is going to feed it into the short corner up and in goes Noah Lee. Elon Rosen came through for three field goals in the third quarter, but the Wayland offense heated up and they outscored Hopkinton 19 to 12 it was a 43 to 40 Wayland lead heading to the fourth quarter. Livingston to Moody, back to Livingston, up for three, count it. A big time three there by Livingston, 48 to 40 Wayland as they try to pull away. During the fourth quarter, the Hillers offense struggled to get going while senior Zoran Livingston for Wayland knocked down four field goals. Wayland outscored Hopkinton 18 to nine in the fourth quarter and took the game over the Hillers 61 to 49 in their first sectional game appearance since 2013. Wayland captured their first title since 1991. The Wayland Warriors move on to the States with a 14 and seven record while the Hopkinton Hillers end their season with a record of 12 wins and 11 losses. Elon Rosen had a team high 16 points for the Hillers during the sectional championship game. Congratulations to head coach Tom Keen and the Hopkinton Hillers team on a tremendous postseason run and congratulations to Wayland on advancing. Well, an unfortunate end to the playoff run there, but an incredible run by the 2019-2020 Hopkinton Hillers boys basketball team. And uh, what's better uh, than to relive that on our last show of the year? And uh, in a year that didn't have a lot of good uh, professional sports memories for the Boston area, it is great that we at least uh, have some great uh, high school memories that we can relive. Yeah, you get that right because <laughs> just – I, I see this here makes you feel so much better watching the games this weekend. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, who wants to hear us complain about the Patriots for an hour? No, no, that's it. Everybody else is doing it. <laughs> I was like last show of the year, what should we do? We, we could complain about the Patriots for an hour. We could complain about this, the Red Sox or the Celtics, or we can relive some great sports memories. So uh, I think I made the right call. Yeah, that was yeah. just an incredible playoff run. That was really fun to follow. And hopefully in uh, 2021, we'll see another one because they'll uh, have some good talent that year. They have some uh, great talent this year. Obviously, there's no playoffs this year, but they got some really good competition. They'll be playing Westwood a whole lot this season, which uh, Coach Keen mentioned last week due to the fact that Hollison and Ashland had to postpone the starts of their seasons. Uh, so they'll see. Most of the TVL rivals that always give uh, the Hillers a run for their money. It, it should be a fun season to cover. And yeah. we're not going to see any of that until next week, right? The uh, 8th of uh, January. Is that when the first games start? Well, Bob, if you were paying attention early in the show, <laughs> I had a was, beautiful I slide that showed all the games we will be broadcasting. Yeah. I think he was just uh, replugging the game. That's yeah, it. No, no, I wasn't paying attention. I never pay attention. <laughs> there you go, Bob. J just <laughs> for you, okay? J just for you. Here you go. Here's our broadcast schedule for this upcoming week. Wednesday, girls hockey at 5.40 p.m. Uh, as they take out Westwood. Thursday, we'll have Alpine skiing at 6.15 p.m. Friday, girls basketball, January 8th. We'll have the JV game at 5, the varsity game at 6.30, maybe the freshman game as well. Uh, we'll keep you updated on that. And then uh, Saturday, January 9th, Varsity Boys Hockey uh, from the New England Sports Center in Marlboro, a 3.40 p.m. face-off against Norwood. 
And then Sunday, January 10th. Are you paying attention, Bob? We'll have boys basketball Sunday, January 10th. 1230, we'll have the JV game. 2 p.m., we'll have the varsity game. So there you have it. And if you uh, need to recheck any of the games that we'll have, you can go to our website, hcam.tv. We of course, in my defense, Tom, I'd like to point out, I didn't specify whether it was <laughs> girls basketball or boys basketball. Well, now you know I both. said basketball. I hear the back pedal. I hear the back yeah. pedal. Yeah, there you go. And by All the right. way, I can't wait to see what the boys basketball team looks like this year after losing eight seniors last year. They'll have some good players coming back, though. Uh, they had some juniors stepping up last year. I think they'll be okay. I think they'll be very competitive. And then right now they have 10 games scheduled. But if Holliston and Ashland are able to resume a couple weeks into the season, they'll get added at some point during this season. So the Hillers could play as much as 12 games this year, which is good. Yep. All right, well, it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for, the Week 17 NFL Picks. And what happened last week? Boy, was it close. It was pretty unbelievable. All right, well, we'll start with we'll, uh, start with the worst records. <laughs> Kevin went 9 and 6. Yep. Bob went 9 and 6. Uh-huh. I went 10 and 5, uh -huh. and Mike went 11 and 4. So there you have it. Mike was last week's champion. And Bob, nine nah. and six finishing last. I mean, you can't really complain about that. It's a pretty good record. Uh, but that was a crazy week last week, crazy week of games. And uh, we all picked Buffalo to beat the Patriots last week. We're all correct on that. And we didn't up, say we would beat them like a drum, but they would beat them. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to be that bad. You know, I did a scoring pool, and I – Figure. I thought it was going to be a close game. I thought Buffalo would win. It was a guess to score scoring pool. I thought Buffalo would win. It would be a close game. But just in case, because I figure there's a possibility New England could just get crushed if Cam Newton plays really bad, which he's been doing a lot lately. I put 38 to 10 Buffalo. Oh. I was one point off, but I won the pool. So that was great. There you go. Close. <laughs> close All right. So uh, in week 17, all the games are going to be on Sunday, as they typically do in yep. the last week of the regular season. So you'll have the full slate on Sunday. And uh, we'll start off with the Buffalo Bills. They have a 1 p.m. game against the Miami Dolphins. There is playoff implications for both teams in this game. The Bills could move up a seed. They're already in. They've already won the division. Uh, the Dolphins actually need to clinch. Uh, they control their own destiny. Even if they lose this game, they have a chance to get in as well, depending on what happens with some other teams. But Miami certainly uh, wants to try to win this game. Uh, so this is going to be an interesting pick. I'm actually going to go – I'm going to go with Miami because I think Buffalo takes their foot off the gas a little in this game uh, because it's not crucial. They're already into the playoffs. They already got a decent seed. And hopefully I can find a pen that works, but I will take Miami uh, in this one. Bob, what do you got? I'm taking the opposite. I'm taking the Bills. All right. I think they're, they're uh, going to make a statement going into the playoffs that uh, they're going to show the other teams in the NFL that they're ready. And I don't think the Dolphins can stop them. The Bills have been the hottest team in the NFL, no doubt. Uh, Mike, what do you got? Well, I'm going uh, Bills because I think Bills want the second seed. You know, if they win, they'll, they'll get the second seed. And uh, Josh Allen's playing great. Miami's uh, offense is struggling. Give me Buffalo. All right. I think uh, Fitzmagic better start. You know what? If Fitzpatrick doesn't start, give me Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> Fitzmagic was magic last week. What and I suppose if the Bills get more points than the Dolphins, you'll want the Bills. I just, yeah. <laughs> I, I just wonder if the Dolphins are better off starting to and then bringing Fitzpatrick in in like the third quarter every game. Yeah. It, it could possibly work. He's uh, came into a lot of games that they were down big and helped them get back in there. All right. So our next game is the 11 and four Saints against the five and 10 Panthers. There is seating implications in this game. If Saints win, Packers lose, I believe Saints could move up to the top seed. So there are, is uh, seeding implications in this game. And because of that, I'm going to go with the Saints. Bob, what do you got? I'm taking the Saints as well. 
I think that uh, they're on a roll. They're going to be up there. I don't have, I don't see how they could lose this game. All right, Mike. Yeah, you know, I, I'm going to go with the Saints, even though, you know, Saints look great being the Vikings. Um, but, you know, Panthers also look good uh, beating Washington on the road. So, yeah, give me, uh, give me the Saints. I'm going Saints. I think the Saints could probably win this game with their backups playing. Close game. Close game. All right. We got the 12 and 3 Packers who are still trying to clinch that one seed against the 8 and 7 Bears. Uh, this could be interesting. Um, I think Packers are going to win. The Bears have been pretty hot lately, but I, I'd say the Packers are going to win this one. Bob, what do you got? Yeah, usually I pick the Bears, and I've been a long time Bears favored against the Packers, but not this time. I think uh, that quarterback that the Packers have may have uh, a good day that day. Uh, Bob going against the Bears. Uh-oh, you know the Bears are going to win now. Mike, yeah. what do you got? Uh, now I should pick the Bears. Uh, uh, win big. So I think not only will the Packers win, I think Aaron Rodgers will uh, lock up the MVP with this game. All right, I like it. Uh, the Bears, they found some offense last week. That was pretty yes. incredible. Yeah. Uh, who did they beat? I forget who they beat, but they found some uh, a lot of offense. And that is pretty surprising since they had Trubisky starting. All right, in our next game, this is a crucial game for the Baltimore Ravens. They could potentially get knocked out of the playoffs if they somehow lose, but they are playing the Cincinnati Bengals, who are 4-10-1, and Ravens 10-5 and on this season. The AFC North is very strange. I feel like this game is somehow going to be close, and the Bengals have actually been playing pretty good the last couple yeah. of weeks. Yeah. Um, they, it was the Browns that they beat last week. And oh no, that was the Jets who beat yes. the Browns. Yeah. The but uh, I'm going to go with the Ravens in this one. Bob, what do you got? Yeah, I'm going with the Ravens too. I have uh, relatives that live down in the Baltimore area. And I think the Purple is going to win this year, this week. Just All this right. week. There you go, Mike. Yeah, Ravens. I don't think the uh, Bengals are going to slow down Jackson. No way. All right, I like it. Uh, our next game, the 12-3 and three Steelers against the 10-5 and five Browns. The Steelers aren't playing for much, and they are benching Ben Roethlisberger in this game. And this is humongous for the Browns because they're actually on the outside looking in after that horrid loss to the Jets last week. Now, the Browns, they, I don't know if you saw what happened to them last week before that game, but they pretty much – had practice squad receivers because of COVID-19. There was close contact uh, protocols that went into place yep. and pretty much their whole receiving core had to stay home. So it was practice squad receivers, but they still should have won. I mean, come on, it's the Jets. I think they'll win this since the Steelers are going to be playing their backups. I'll go Cleveland. Bob, what do you got? I'm going to go with the Steelers. I, even without Ross burger in there, I, I'm I think that the Steelers can put up a good uh, fight against them. And I, I, I just don't see him letting that go. All right. Well, Mason Rudolph hasn't been bad. Mike, what do you got? I tell you with Rudolph Stott, I think, I think they, they're going to do well. However, um, I think Cleveland will, uh, I think, I think, I think Cleveland's going to get it. All right. Cleveland needs to win, and they need either a Ravens or a Colts loss to yeah, get into the they, playoffs. Right, exactly. Yeah, they they will win and make the playoffs. That's why. That's All my right, point. here's a game with no playoff implications: the six and nine Vikings, the five and ten Lions. I'm going Minnesota. Bob, what do you got? I'm going Minnesota too, but uh, the Lions have been uh, up and down, up and down. I don't know. I, they have been very up and down. Mike, what do you got? Mostly down. Uh, well, yeah, yeah no, you got the Vikings. Uh, what they got blown up by the Saints, and yeah, uh, the Lions didn't even show up against the Bucks. So, give me Vikings. All right. Uh, here's a game that has no playoff implications. The 14 and one Chiefs. They've already clinched the one seed. The six and nine Chargers. That game's a 4:25 game. I don't think the Chiefs are going to play anyone in this game. Uh, I'll be surprised if they do. So I'll go with the Chargers. Bob, what do you got? I'm going with the Chiefs. I think even if they play their second string, they'll still beat the Chargers. All right, Mike. No, I don't agree. You know, uh, I think Herbert will win this one against 
the second and third string Chiefs. All right, there it is. Here's a game with no playoff implications. The two and 13 Jets, the six and nine Patriots. Patriots have just been horrible lately. I think they're the worst team in football right now. The Jets coming off of two really surprising wins. Uh, who was it? They beat the Rams somehow, yeah, yeah. and then they beat the Browns. Yeah, uh, obviously, they had more of an opportunity with the Browns since they lacked receivers, but pretty incredible. And guess what? I think they're going to finish out the season on a strong note, and I think the Jets are going to take down the Patriots. Patriots have just been awful lately, and I don't think they'll put it together. Give me the Jets. Bob, what do you got? I'm picking the Pats, and I'm picking them because I don't believe that Cam is going to make it through the game. Even if he starts, I don't think he's going to make it through the game. I think Stidman's going to come in and show you what a mistake it was playing Cam. I think you could play quarterback better than Stidham. Yeah. Mike, what do you got? <laughs> Ouch. Uh, you know, I, I am going <laughs> to – I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm going to go Jets. Uh <laughs> I think it's going to be a low scoring game. It's going to be like 40 points, you know, but I think it's going to be close. You know, New England has the worst offense right now. The worst. Yeah. And, and the Jets, gonna, Jets want to keep that streak going uh, and try to go for three in a row. All right. There it is. Two for the Jets, one for the Pats. Our next game has playoff implications. The six and nine Cowboys taking on the five and 10 Giants. The Giants are still in it actually uh all the nfc east teams are still in it except the eagles uh so the winner you got to win this game though if you're one of these teams and then you need a washington loss to the eagles right. and we'll get into that scenario in a bit <laughs> so this game's crucial cowboys giants uh dallas has stepped it up lately um i think this game's going to be close but i'll go with the cowboys bob what do you got i'm going with the giants I think they're they're going to beat the Cowboys. I don't think the Cowboys have their head in the right place. Maybe they have a few good plays, but I don't think they're going to – I think the Giants are going to try and get in the playoffs. Yeah, and the Giants have their head in the right place, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, don't say you where it is. I was gonna say, I'm not going to say where that place is. However, uh, uh, give me the Cowboys. Andy Dalton uh, is going to come alive on offense. The Red Rocket propels the Cowboys into the playoffs. I could just see yeah. the headlines. Yeah. All right. The six and nine Washington football team controls their own destiny. Win and in. Alex Smith uh, may or may not be available for this game. I think they're leaning towards probably not. They cut Haskins, so he won't be playing. The, uh, they actually benched Haskins during last week's game because he was so horrid and brought in their third string quarterback, who I have – who I totally forget the name. Uh, and this is a Sunday night game, by the way, the 820 game. So Washington controls their own destiny. The Eagles yep. are out, but they could uh, send Washington home and keep them from getting into the playoffs. They're 4 10 and 1. Eagles got eliminated last week. Uh, I'm going to go Washington. I think the Eagles are kind of a mess. I think Washington is uh, playing in desperation mode. So I'll go Washington, but they'll probably lose because that's what Washington usually does in crucial situations. Bob, what do you got? Yeah, I'm going with Washington myself. There's a big rivalry between Washington and Eagles. Uh, the, the fans down in that part of the country are well split between Washington and Philadelphia. So I, I just don't see the Eagles are just disgusting. So it's got to be Washington. Mike. Oh, let's see. Alex Smith is banged up. And, you know, so we won't know until game time with him, I believe. Uh, Eagles have played much better uh, as of late with uh, Jalen Hurts. And I know the Eagles want to spoil Washington's playoff party. So, uh, come on, we're we get we're uh, we only got a couple minutes left. Eagles, pick, pick. Eagles, Eagles, Eagles. All right, all right. We got to fly through the rest of them. We got uh, the four and eleven Falcons against the ten and five Bucks. Bucks, they're in the playoffs, that's for sure. But they are playing for seeding, and there's an outside chance they can uh, win the division. If the Saints lose and they win, or actually, no, they can't because uh, Saints have the tiebreaker, but they are playing for seeding. Uh, so I think the Bucs are going to play hard in this game. And, you know, Brady, he doesn't like to sit on the bench. So I'll go Bucks. Bob, what do you got? Bucks. I go Bucks too. All right, Mike. Bucks. All right. And I'm rooting for the Bucs to win the Super Bowl, just so everyone knows. Yeah. Uh, the seven, go Brady. The seven and eight Raiders, the five and 10 Broncos, no playoff implications. Uh, I don't know. This is a 
play it for pride game. Give me the Raiders. Bob. I got the Raiders myself. All right, Mike. Yeah, give me Raiders. All right. Our next game, the 10 and five Titans, the four and 11 Texans, a lot of playoff implications in this, uh, the Titans, if they lose and the Colts win Colts win the division, uh, Titans are locked into the playoffs, uh, but this is a crucial game. They're taking on the four and 11 Texans. I'm going to go with the Titans. Bob, what do you got? Yeah. The Titans, they, they're going to, yeah, they're going to win. All right, Mike. Yeah. Uh, Titans. <laughs> yeah. I'll just write. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, game with playoff implications. The one in fourteen Jaguars. The ten and five Colts. Colts must win to get into the playoffs. This is a crucial game. Jaguars are horrible. I'm going Colts. Bob, what do you got? Yeah. Why? Why would you not go Colts to Jaguars? Right. <laughs> and Mike Colts, please. Okay, that's what I figured. <laughs> uh, here's a game with playoff implications. Uh, loser of this is out eight and seven Cardinals, nine and six Rams. This is going to be a good one. Yeah. Cardinals have been really struggling. Uh, the Rams haven't been great, but I'll take the Rams. Bob, what do you got? Yeah, I'm taking the Rams too. I, I originally thought maybe the Cardinals would have a chance in this, but on second thought, I went with the Rams. All right, Mike. Oh my goodness. Goff is out, right? Jared Goff. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. I forgot about that. He is yeah. out. So, uh, oh, that's bad. Yeah, I'm going Cardinals. I'm changing my pick. Goff's out. I'm going right. Cardinals. All right. And then for way too much pressure on that Rams defense, I am going Cardinals. All right. Bob, are you sticking with Rams? Yeah, I'm sticking with the Rams. Like I said, I had second thoughts, but I, I just decided the Rams. All right. The last game. Uh, this one does have playoff implications. The Seahawks could clinch the division with a win. They're 11 and four, taking on the six and nine 49ers, who are just uh, a beat up team. I have a feeling this game will be close, but I'm going with the Seahawks. Bob, what do you got? Yeah, the Seahawks. That, that'll uh, really frost uh, Belichick when uh, the Seahawks get in, and he doesn't. All right, Mike. Yeah, I'm going to Seattle. I think they're going to find a way to win late in the game. All right, well, there you have it the week 17 picks. Some good games. Uh, Usually week 17 is crazy. Should be oh, a fun is, one. Yeah, this is going to be really fun to see. And and, you know, and we didn't be, bother with any of the college picks for the uh, new year, but uh, if we had, I would have picked Alabama. Ah, I haven't even looked at those games on the new yeah, year yet. I don't even know who's played. I don't like yeah. That's right. They're, <laughs> well, they are doing some bowl games. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, there was a – I think it was Navy who or Army who has a really good record, like – I don't know, 10 and one or something like that. And yeah. they got kept out of a bowl game yes, uh, because th that bowl was canceled. Meanwhile, they have like a two and 18 playing. So I stopped paying attention after that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I have no, uh, no feels for any of these bowl games at all. Uh, only because like, like you just said, you know, the ones that deserve to be in there have canceled the games and the ones that, yeah, I've, Let's get, let's yeah. wait till next year on these players. Yeah, they all had they had a lot of them had shortened seasons because uh, games were canceled during the season, so it wasn't uh, wouldn't be really a fair pick, but still. Yeah, it was a pretty wild season. There was a lot of uh, postponed games. Uh, fortunately, and we've talked about it on this show, uh, Boston College, the local team around here, they pretty much played every game on time except one. Uh, so at least uh, some of the leagues got out of it without too many postponements, but. It is what it is, you know, 2020 for you. What can you do? But yeah. we are out of time. We want to wish everyone out there a very happy new year. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you in 2021. Take care, everybody. And we'll talk to you again soon.